Dale uh, Takatimu, I think it is, at the at yeah. the weekend, talked about yeah. quote this white supremacist underpinned government end quote direct quote. Um, yeah. That's obviously a something that's said that's risen up and got a few heckles up. Do you agree with that statement? How do we classify the government? How how do we see them as being white supremacist underpinned? Because that sounds like one step away from they are white supremacist. It's a bit like talking about the elite Maori. That's like Hitler talked about the elite Jews. It's like they're using the same playbook. So that's what I hear when I hear underpinned as opposed to actually being. How do you react when you hear uh, her saying this white supremacist underpinned government? Well, okay, let's let's just um, look at this in a non-emotive way. We have a government that's come in that wants to undo policy and and systems that were designed by a tribunal and by multiple medical experts that would help Māori to close the gap of why they're dying seven to ten years earlier than non. We have a government, okay, so that's about um, well-being. We have a government that knows that Māori die more from cancer, lung cancer, and they're wanting to increase smoking, um, particularly mm. uh, that's aimed at initiatives towards Māori. We have a government that wants to rid um, the country uh, or relegate um, Aotearoa. So there we have our lives, our well-being are at threat, our language is at threat. We have a government that has now decided that our very existence, the waka papa that makes up Te Tiriti, that our waka papa doesn't matter. We didn't mm. exist before um, colonisation. If that is not examples of the tools of white supremacism, and then again, take it away, just pretend we're somewhere else. If you saw three or four of those traits, what would you call them? Yeah. Because they are not non-extreme. They are yeah. extreme efforts to wipe away the role, the language, the well-being, the ability and the rights for the indigenous peoples of this land, nowhere else, um, to be self-determining. Those are all things, sadly, that we've seen white supremacists do across the world, that we've seen happen to indigenous peoples. And the worst thing is, that often those white supremacists are driven by shareholder type initiatives. So they have an economic capitalist imperative. So one plus one plus one plus one. <laughs> and so again, I and I know I saw um, some of the reaction in the media and to be really honest, um, counteract it. Like take away, take away that we're not talking about here. Just put that on a sheet of paper, write it up, send it out to somebody else and tell us, what do you think is the culture or the habits or the traits of those people who are applying that onto the indigenous peoples? If that's not yeah. white supremacy at its absolute you know, best, then, then what is it? Because it's not mild. And what's even worse is that everything anti maori is being put into the 100 day. So we're not even given the right to have be to be consulted, the existence of our very, you know, our, our existing iwi leaderships to be involved it's just get out get out of my way maori you are in the way of progress whether it's our environmental views our cultural views our real views you know just get our health views so i yeah i i'm sorry i i totally support what she said there is no way to soften the truth mm -hmm.